So good evening, fellow Toastmasters. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Anita Pathak, and I'm one of your program quality director. Tonight, this is our very first workshop on how to run a virtual open house. As you know, October is the open house month, and we encourage all of the clubs to run an open house. And tonight, Michelle will be telling us about all the tips and tricks on how to run a virtual open house. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Michelle Spear, who will be your facilitator tonight. A little bit about Michelle. She has been a Toastmaster for eight years. In this short time, she has served as area governor, division director, most of the club officer roles served on various district committees and achieved her distinguished Toastmaster, DTM. Her goals have been very focused and through hard work and good leadership, she won the 2017-2018 Division Director of the Year Award and the 2018-2019 Club President of the Year Award. Through trial and error and a lot of hand-holding, Michelle learned how to run an exemplary open house and now we will get the benefit from her struggles. Just to let you know that I will be your Zoom moderator tonight. At the end of this workshop there will be questions and answers but in the meantime as Michelle is going through the workshop if something comes to your mind just type your question in the chat and uh, we will be, Michelle will be answering your questions. And also Michelle will, I mean, Michelle has sent me some documents on open houses. I have your email addresses and I'm going to forward them to you. And let's buckle up and give a big round of applause to Michelle. The floor is yours, Michelle. Thank you very much, Anita. And welcome everybody. I'm so glad that you're here. I am going to have some PowerPoint and I'm, I'll show it and I'll take it down because I'm also going to ask you to participate. Okay, you don't want to sit here and listen to me for the next hour just yammering at you. So be ready to answer some questions. Fair? Okay. A number of years ago, I was trying to charter a new club and it was a long struggle. It took us over two years and we ran some open house events but we didn't really see a whole lot of success. Well, it turns out that we were doing it all wrong. Now, way back when, when Emilio Morales was the, was the um, public relations manager for the district, he actually came and he worked with us. And he showed us how we should be setting up an open house. And what he taught was phenomenal. So then I've been sharing it along with other people and of course giving him the credit because he's the one that taught me. But we ended up having, we, after his planning, we ended up having 45 guests at our open house. And we had a 12% uh, rate of return. So 12% of them became members. Now, five people does not sound like a big deal. 12% sounds great, but it's still only five people. But over the next three months, another 12 of those people joined. And over the next six months, another 15 people joined. We had over 27 people when we finally chartered the club. So it, it, was, it was pretty good and all from one open house. They really do work. And the trick is you can't slap them together. It does take at least four weeks to six weeks of planning. So I would say, take what you learned today and start planning your open house for October. Because if you wait until October, you're not gonna have very much luck and it's not gonna be as good as it could be. So who can tell me what an open house is? First question, just shout it out. You have to take yourselves off mute, of course. What's an open house? A show and tell. A show and tell of what? Of your club. Of your club, okay. What else? Karen, yeah. you have your hand up? Yeah, yep. an, op an open invitation to learn about Toastmasters. Okay, what else is it? To show them what they're missing. To show them <laughs> what they're missing, absolutely. Let them know that you're one of the best clubs. You have fun. 
Absolutely. And if fun isn't involved, what's the point? Mm. What else is it? An event to be able to recruit new members. Yep. And invite guests. Absolutely. So what is an open house not? Party. <laughs> Oh no, it should always be a party. Even though Elton had a Hawaiian party or something, didn't he? That's right. That's good for an open house theme night. But what is it not? A lecture. It's not a lecture. Shouldn't be boring. Okay. Should not be boring. That's right. Okay. I'll give you a clue. It's not a demonstration meeting. It's not a kickoff meeting and it's not a regular meeting. What your open house is going to be is an experience. It's going to be an event. So that's why you need to have all the planning. It's an event that informs the public about Toastmasters and about your club specifically. It's used to motivate your guests to join so that they can develop new skills. It's also meant to entertain them which is where the experience part comes in. No one likes boring, so give them value for their time. Most sales are made because of the overwhelming value that, that somebody receives by way of free items. And in, a, in the case of an open house, a free item could be something that, that the keynote speaker has said, something that, that um, some word of wisdom, some, some piece of advice, some, some action that people can take immediately. That is something of value that they can use and walk away with, and it costs nothing. People like that. I like that. I like free. Do you guys like free? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So just remember, it is an event. Now, why do we need to have an open house? Got to be more than just an excuse to party. <laughs> <laughs> to get members. To get members, absolutely. Does everybody have more than 20 members and they're happy and they don't need any, any others? Mm. Do we all need members? Yes. Yeah, so why not use this opportunity to get as many members as you possibly can? Okay, so that's my little preamble. I'm going to share the agenda with you now. Where is it? Here it is. So we're going to take a look at the pre-planning at promotion, then showtime, the post open house review, can't see behind my, my uh, screen, and the Q&A. Okay, so you're going to have a chance to ask lots of questions. I will do my very best to answer them, and if I don't know the answers, I will get back to you. Any questions with the agenda? Everybody good? All good. All right, let's start out with pre-planning. Now, the pre-planning stage is the most fun. It really is. And we're gonna spend a lot of time on this area. So you need to ask yourself your, your main questions. What is your goal? Why do you wanna have an open house? We mentioned one, which was to increase your membership. Why else might you want an open house? To let people know about Toastmasters, what we offer, like the uh, communication and leadership skills, this is the place where they can go if they want to hone those skills. Yep. How about using it to also to start new clubs, maybe within a company? Yeah. You know, invite some of your bosses to your community club and say, hey, you know, we should do something like this at work as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when are you going to have it? In October. October. Is it the entire month, Anita, or do you have a yeah. No, it's the, it's the entire month. And what the district will be doing, the district will be promoting the open house through the LinkedIn campaign. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So you have a month. If you start planning now, you can have an absolutely blowout party and open house. Okay. Ask a question here. Yes, Joe. Uh, Anita just mentioned a LinkedIn uh, uh, promotion. Yeah. 
Do you need to know the dates of our open house in order to promote um, that? Or? We will have more details um, from our public relations manager and on today's newsletter, there was a mention about the LinkedIn campaign that we will be using to promote the open house. Okay, if you, if you. you read to, um, the newsletter, the one that we received today, more yeah. information on that. Elton, you want to say something? No, I just saying I, I read it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you read it. Okay, good job. <laughs> Yeah, so, so it, it's it's nice that the, the district is not only saying have your open houses, but they're also promoting it for us. Yeah. And because we're virtual, it's going to be open to a lot more people, which is awesome. If you're a corporate club, why should you have a, an open house? To, to reach out to new employees who just joined the, the organization and tell them that, hey, we do have a club here. Come and check, on, check us on. Good. How about getting sponsorship from your senior management at the company? Mm -hmm. Some clubs just don't have it and they're, they're struggling along, but if they actually have support from upper management or from their HR department, it helps to, it helps to strengthen the club. And we'll definitely get more more members that way okay so when are we holding it in october yay how many times should you hold a an open house during the year twice oh twice why so few well at least six, twice six at least <laughs> <laughs> anita is very hopeful <laughs> I used to say, if you can hold three a year, that's, that's a really good thing. Um, do one in, the, in, the, in October, and then do another one, I would say, just after Christmas. So in January, you know, New Year's resolutions. Get people when they're, when they're all excited and they want to start something new and improve themselves. And then do one again in April or May, because then, then you build up your numbers as well. Uh, okay. Does everybody use Zoom for their meetings? Oh, Karen, what do you use? We're using Google Meet because some of our members don't know how to use Zoom. Okay. <laughs> Elton, what are you using? Zoom. Okay, I thought you'd hold up your hand saying that you use something else. Who else uses something other than Zoom? That's it? Okay. So you can get various platforms. There's Zoom, there's Google Meet, there's WebEx, there's... Um, Windows Meet. Skype. Microsoft Teams. Yep, Microsoft Teams. Yeah. So, so we're, we're getting a lot more variety. Figure out which one is going to be the easiest for you, for your club, for other people to join in. If people don't have... Um, Microsoft Teams in their Microsoft suite, then they can't use it. So make sure that make sure that if you're going to invite people in from outside, they all have access to whatever it is, whichever platform you're using. Okay, then you also have to decide who is your target audience? Who is it you want to involve in your in your open house? Are you targeting people like young professionals, retirees? newcomers to Canada, law students, engineers. Who is it you want to focus on? Is there a special interest that your club has? Do you know the professional organizations that you want to target? Do you know the colleges or the universities, the programs, where to go to, to hit up those people and, and get them interested and get them invited? Um, Okay, so let's do a poll. Who are you planning on inviting? Everybody and everybody? Or are you gonna be specific? Well, we, we talked about uh, uh, doing a bring a friend kind of campaign. Okay. Members. Good. Maybe what we can do is also to reach out to those guests who have visited our club for the past six months yep. and let them know that we are running an open house 
and also reach out to those members who have left the club for a reason or another and sit, ask them to, to come and visit us for the open house. Just try to reignite that, um, that the passion. passion. Yep. Yep. We, we, without, without um, focusing on the open house, we actually reached out to, to guests and former members from two or three years ago and two of them decided they want to join up again. They hadn't been to a meeting in like three years, but hey, do we want to join again? It's like, oh, yay. So it's pretty awesome. Okay, so, so you can either go with the invite a friend approach and, and, and hit everybody you can, or you can focus on specific groups of people. Okay, you might want to, you want, you might want to do something like um, women re-entering the workforce after raising their kids or um, I know there was, there was somebody who had been talking about um, targeting men who've been released from prison so that they can build up their skills so that they can, they can go uh, for job interviews. So there's, there's all kinds of targets, all kinds of people that, that you can approach. It's just up to you who you want to, who you want to aim for. Okay. At an open house, what have you got planned? What are you going to do? Tracy, I'm going to pick on you. We don't have anything planned yet because we're just starting to talk about it. Um, okay. uh, we definitely want the meeting to be interesting, but we haven't talked about in what way we want to showcase probably to some extent what a typical meeting is because we don't want to um, misrepresent ourselves um, like we want to sell who we are but I guess make it interesting at the same time but we haven't we haven't really we're, we're still we haven't even started planning it we're just learning it or I'm just learning at this stage okay okay is it Elton uh, well, well what, uh, I think you you have to uh, break it down an another add another layer in this mm -hmm. that's in terms of content and in terms of who are you going to have to be your your speaker oh don't get ahead of me here <laughs> <Yeah>. hold on <laughs> Just don't get ahead of me here Alton. <laughs> we're getting there though but what kinds of things do you want to show people on a on a on a higher level than what elton is getting into right now Maybe you want to show them how to do table topics. Okay. Have a speaker, have an evaluation, and not everything, but the main roles that, um, that can help them. Okay. The problem with that is mm -hmm. that is a demonstration meeting. Oops. We don't want a demonstration meeting. Okay. So I'll get into a little bit more of what you do want for an open house, but I like demonstration meetings and absolutely hold as many as you can throughout the year and get people mm -hmm. interested, but it is going to be a different, a different animal than a, an open house. Uh, okay. So what have you got planned? So you want something fun. If we were doing this in person, you'd have networking time. You'd have face-to-face -face opportunities for people to get together. You'd have food. But this is virtual, so there's a lot of that kind of stuff that we can't have in this, in this forum. What are the outcomes that you want? What are you hoping for from this open house? People enjoying the meeting. Okay. Itself. People enjoying themselves. What else? Mm -hmm. Karen. Yeah, it's, uh, people interested enough to ask for further information Ooh, or, to come, yeah. or, or to come to the next meeting. Yep. Get people interested. What else? They leave away something. Welcome. Oh, hold on. Uh, Mary, you started first. Uh, they leave the meeting or the open house with something and that you, how do I say, you tantalize their taste buds that they're willing to come back and Get join the more. second meeting or more. Yep, good. And Ahita? Yeah, I was saying to give them a comfort, comfort feeling and welcome feeling and being supported so they would come back. Yeah, good. Friendly Pretty much fun to do at a regular meeting. 
face to face, right? Give them the warm fuzzies and make That's them true. want to come back, make them feel like they're part of the group, part of the community. It's harder to do over exactly. Zoom. It is much harder. So you have to work harder at doing yeah. it. Okay, what is going to be your big draw at the open house? In terms of online? Yeah. Well, we have a, an award-winning speaker as a guest speaker. Okay, good. What else could you have as the big draw? A topical speaker. One table topic. Sorry? Sorry, I didn't get you. I think he said table topics. Yeah. Like fun, fun table topics. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because if they're boring, <laughs> but we'll talk more about those as well. Okay. So the reason that we're holding this open house is to get people interested, give them an experience, to expose them to Toastmasters and to your club in particular, to have some fun, to meet new people, did I miss anything? Is this a test? Are you checking? No. <laughs> <laughs> Throw out some more stuff if I've missed it. <laughs> Did I cover just about everything? Yes. Okay, good. So that's, that's the reasons for our pre-planning. So the next question is, who does what? Okay, so first of all, you need to have a chair and the chair is going to do the organization and planning. They're gonna have a committee, get a group of people together to help you. You do not have to do this all on your own. Now, if you're like me and you're a control freak, then yes, you wanna do everything on your own to make sure that it gets done right. <laughs> However, <laughs> that's not what being a leader is all about, leading, means that you have people working with you. You have your VPPR, and they're going to do all the promoting. Is that right? Yes. No. No. <laughs> no. Everyone. <laughs> VPPR is going to plan the promotions and get everybody involved. Because if they are the ones that are, that are posting the stuff onto Facebook, and nobody else from the club does, what's the point? That's true. Okay, only the people who are friends with that one person are gonna see what's being posted. So you need to work with your members to make sure that whatever you're posting, they are posting and sharing and liking, okay? We need greeters. Now, how do you be a greeter on Zoom? <laughs> it's hard to do, but you need to have at least two people, like Anita and I did when, when this, before everybody came on, and just talk to people, welcome them, see how they're doing, see how their day's going, see how work's going, see how they're holding up during COVID, because, you know, some people are struggling and it's not easy for everybody, and just chit chat and make people feel welcome and make them feel at home. So have two people dedicated to welcoming everybody else, whether they're members or guests. Just make people feel welcome because hands up if you're sick to death of online meetings. Okay, yeah. Boring, dull, I don't care anymore. But isn't it nice when you run into one and people are talking to each other and not just meeting, 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 business, 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 but actually having conversations. It's kind of fun. My Saturday morning group, I just have to share this because I think they're pretty awesome. Um, our meeting starts at 9, 9.30 on a Saturday morning. We actually get together at 8.30 in the morning and have breakfast together online. So everybody makes their breakfast or runs out to McDonald's or whatever, and we all get together and just sit and eat in each other's faces. But we talk and it's fun. 
isn't it, Elton? Uh, well, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm having a good time. Awesome. <laughs> So if anybody ever wants to join us on a Saturday morning at 8.30, let me know, and you're more than welcome to join in and have some fun. Shameless. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So as, sorry, I have to see what's behind my screen. Um, so decide who your chair is going to be. Get the chair to, to gather a committee. Figure out who your, who your VPPR wants as part of their committee and start working together and start planning things out. Use this, use this opportunity to use your members' strengths and to let them shine. There are gonna be some people who are better, you know, in the face and, and doing the talking, other people who are gonna be working, who work better behind the scenes, other people who are good at planning, other people who are good at, at promoting, Figure out what their strengths are and use them. Okay, they've got a talent for some for some reason, so why not use it? Uh, meet with your club and ask the following questions: Who's go who's a good organizer? Who's a good planner? Who are the friendliest and more, most welcoming members of the club? Who are the people who can speak clearly and loudly and can be understood? And who really likes social media? <laughs> now, I'm probably going to get shot down for this, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's really vitally important. The people you're, you're choosing to take on key speaking roles need to be understood. If they have a super thick accent and you're struggling all the time to understand what they're saying, either work with them so that when, when they are speaking, they can be understood and the words are coming clear through clearly, or give them a slightly lesser role. But you need to have the get, if the guests don't understand what's being said, they may not come back. And I may get shot down for that, but that's, that's reality. So just keep an eye on that, okay? Um, Here's a really awesome thing. How many people are doing pathways? Hands up. Okay, how many people are at or near level five? Hands up. All right, level five in many of the paths have an HPL, which is a high performance leadership project. Planning this is a perfect opportunity to get your HPL because you're gonna to have to work with the team. You can get your 360 evaluation in and it'll get you your credit. If you're not sure what an HPL project is, jump ahead to level five on, path, on whatever path you're on, take a look at it. You can do the video, you can print out the evaluation forms and all the paperwork, use it, and then when you do eventually get to level five, then you can, you can watch the video again and do your assessment and everything, and it'll count as your credit, okay? Don't waste this opportunity. If you know somebody in your club who needs it, who's like this close, but they need a project, let them take it on. Remember, you can have more than one open house through a year, so share the wealth, share the opportunities. All right, any questions so far? We're all good? Awesome. <coughs> Now, planning the agenda, for, now for the meeting. You're gonna need to have a keynote speaker. You're gonna need to have two toastimonial speakers. You're going to need a table topics master, a toastmaster who will also be your MC, and potentially, depending on how long your meeting is, how long you wanna run your open house, somebody who can briefly explain Pathways. So, the Pathways ambassador, would be a good person, but not that entire speech they give. You just want to cover things like um, the benefits of Pathways or what they can expect in Pathways. You don't want the whole Pathways ambassador speech because it'll be way too long. Okay, it's just a teaser for the audience. Uh, now, 
Anita said that uh, she's going to send you all my handouts. Mm -hmm. Part of it is an actual script that I have used for my open houses. You can use that as a sample. You're either free to use it as is, just fill in the blanks, or you can um, change it up, you know, for yourself. But you can use it as, as a guide. Now, your keynote speaker is going to be the draw for the open house. What would be, a, or who would be a good key, keynote speaker? We already heard somebody who is an award winner. Or a comp Joe, what did you say? Yeah, we, well, we got uh, the district uh, first place winner. Okay. At the speech contest. Yeah. Okay. That's good. But does the general public know who they are? Uh, no, but you can mention the award winning speaker kind of deal, right? You know what? The public doesn't care. Yeah. yeah. The public really doesn't care. It's nice to have them, but if I, if I heard that I was going to listen to this person, it's like, so what's he got to do with anything? Mm. So who else could you use? Who else would you be willing to approach? An uh, experienced speaker in your own club or uh, somebody who's willing to do their first icebreaker or redo their icebreaker. Okay, but Mary, is the community gonna care? No. No. I, I, I would think if you, uh, if it's a, it say for example, if it's a closed club, then maybe you would want to have someone that's well known, that everybody knows, maybe there's a VP that is considered to be well-spoken mm -hmm. uh, and very popular, mm -hmm. and that, that individual give give the the, the keynote I've, I've done that once with yep. one club where we only had like eight people in the club but we had this person who was a vice president very popular very well known as a speaker and we had a, a total of 45 people in the room wow so nice had this person that was um, uh, special. So the other thing too is that you could look at having um, maybe your counselor uh, okay. uh, because the, the whole I think that's what I was going to talk about earlier but I think about you have to have somebody from the outside to come to you so yeah. that they bring people in. If you have a Toastmaster even though they may be well known within the Organ within the district, who cares? Nobody knows them on the outside. And I don't care how well you advertise, yeah. you're still going to receive Toastmasters. On the other hand, I agree with you there, but you can use a Toastmaster who has done something phenomenal outside of Toastmasters. That's just an added bonus. For example, for, for, the, for the big um, open house that I did um, and we got 45 people, I had Karen Goodyear speak. Mm -hmm. Now, what did Karen speak about? How her HPL project, so she tied it back into Toastmasters, but it was, it was learning a form of sign language and teaching it and... <sighs> I can't even tell you everything that she did, but it was, it was incredible, all because she wanted to help a friend of hers who was, who was having, um, oh, help me out here, all kinds of problems. But she worked with the hospital, she worked with the Bob, Bob Rumble School for the Deaf, she worked with, um, um, what's the place up on Bayview? Dummy. Sunnybrook. What? Sunnybrook. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, she worked with all these all these hospitals and organizations to to learn this form of sign language that would help people communicate better, and that was her project. And so she was able to pull in her community involvement, community experience, as well as Toastmasters, combine the two, and it made for an incredible speech. So if you need a really good um, a keynote speaker, ask Karen Goodyear. I'd use her again in a heartbeat. Now, uh, what happened to 
Karen. <laughs> no, Karen. What happened? There's Karen. Karen, you had your hand up while Elton was talking. Yes, I was going to suggest the city councillor. Mm -hmm. Also, anybody who has a specific topic that the community is hot on, for instance, wolf yep. uh, or raccoon population, something that's topical that everybody can kind of relate to. Yep. The only uh, thing you have to be careful about is how political it can be. But then you can also invite somebody who is uh, from uh, the local academics, um, yep. if, if it makes sense. Yes. Uh, some research project that's being done at University of Toronto that relates back to the community. Again, yep. the more in common the speaker is, I think the better off everyone would have mm -hmm. in terms of relating. Think about your, your audience, who, who you're inviting, and try and gear your keynote speaker towards them. Okay, find out what's hot in your area. What's, what's the topic of conversation? What's, what's in the news that people are getting all worked up about? Um, it could be about equity or equality or, or um, um, human rights. You know, it, any of those, as long as it's not, as long as the speaker isn't militant, and really in your face about things because you can really turn a lot of people off even if they agree with it. So you, you want to be sure that they're going to be tactful as well. Uh, there was um, also there are some noted speakers who come along with books that they want to sell. Absolutely. So now you have to make a decision. Do you want to offer them this opportunity to make money and have people possibly more interested in the speaker and their books or in Toastmasters? And is the book something that you or your club or Toastmasters in general would actually promote? So you gotta be careful about that too. And especially online, because people won't actually have a book to pick up and look at. So, what are some other suggestions of people you could invite? Oh, don't everybody throw ideas out here. Come on. Uh, individuals like, uh, let's say, uh, well-known uh, individuals within the community. Uh, yeah. They don't have to be superstars. No. Nope. If well-known within, say, a five-block radius of your club, Mm -hmm. then I think that would, that would be a, a candidate for yep. your open house. Um, you can always ask your local BIA to, to have a representative and then invite all the businesses in the area to attend and hear them speak. Because it could be about community involvement. It could be about um, the changing face of the community. It, you know, work it in and, and see what you can, what you can figure out. How about sports people, sports announcers, athletes, TV personalities, even musicians that are well known? All of them will have some kind of leadership experience. So you can draw on that. Um, if you don't pay for anybody, like if you were, if you had gajillion funds, and you can pay for people, you know, Pinball Clemens is an awesome speaker, but who can afford him, right? So, so you need to find somebody cheap. You might want to find, um, consider somebody from the, from the healthcare profession to talk about stress, to talk about how to cope in, in the world today when we're all isolated. You know, that, that's very personal to what everybody is going through right now. Whether or not they're struggling, there's always going to be some kind of tip or, or, or information that they can take away from the, from the talk. So be creative. Um, you might also want to look at, at somebody who has used Toastmasters to start off a new career. So does anybody know JD? Oh, I'm drawing a blank. What's JD's last name? JD Thomas? Yes, JD Thomas. So JD was the was the public relations manager when I first started in Toastmasters. 
and he ended up quitting his job and opening up a new firm, public relations business, and he's doing quite well. And it's all because of what he learned at Toastmasters. So not at the club level, but at the district level. So he's, he's made a success of that. So there's, there's somebody else who, who ties in um, their, their uh, business life and Toastmasters, ties them together and shows the benefits. So there's all kinds of people out there that, that you can use both inside and outside Toastmasters, but find somebody who is going to be engaging, somebody who's going to make people want to come and listen to them. Okay, uh, Toastimonials. These are my favorite. How many people have heard Toastimonials? Okay, Toastimonials are very personal and it's usually what gets people in the heart. Okay, they're the ones that usually make people want to join Toastmasters. We had a lady in my club who had suffered from, from a really, really bad concussion. She was elderly in her 80s and she was, she was having a lot of struggles and she found that Toastmasters helped her think logically and helped her build her confidence. So she was, she was very unsure of herself and she didn't want to speak because she didn't think she made sense. But because we, we had her work through her icebreaker and work through a couple of speeches, she found that she was writing and rewriting and re -re rewriting her speeches until they became logical. And it really helped her and it was almost like a form of therapy for her. But she got up there and she spoke to the guests from her heart about what her life had been like, what happened to her and what Toastmasters has done to help her. And, you know, there were tears. There were tears and it just tugged at people's hearts. We had another young lady who was, who was from Brazil and she, had, she thought she had a really, really thick accent and people couldn't understand her. Now we didn't really have that much, much of a trouble and, and she was doing really well, but she was also afraid to speak because she thought the people couldn't understand her and they thought they were, she thought that they were going to be laughing at her. But it gave, Toastmasters gave her confidence and a safe place to practice and to, and to converse. And so she told that story about how hard it was coming to Canada, about how hard it was trying to make friends, about how hard it was trying to find people she could speak to without being made to feel like an idiot. And, you know, that also brought in a whole sweeping load of, of Brazilians into our club as well, which was kind of funny because then we were the Brazilian club. But, you know, toastimonials are the things that really get at people's hearts and really make them smile, really make that connection. So when you're choosing people for your toastimonials, and you should have two, choose a, a junior member of the club and a senior member. And it doesn't even have to be age. It could just be how long they've been in. All right. Now, um, and make sure that, that they have a story to tell. And, and go through it with them a couple of times. Make sure that they practice their story. And if it, you know, tweak it if you need to, to make it, you know, part Presentable. Up. Presentable, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> All right, your table topic speaker should speak clearly. This is, this is another one where, have you ever had a table topic speaker? And I hate to say this, but the English was not really great and you had no idea what they were asking you to talk about? Yeah. Okay, so that can be really embarrassing both for the table topics master and for the speakers. And if, if uh, a guest is hearing them for the first time and they're not sure about what's, what's going on, it's going to make it really awkward. So try and have, once again, somebody who can speak clearly and slowly enough so that they are understood. And agree on the topic as a group a couple of weeks ahead of time 
and go through the questions or the or the word or the statement or whatever you're using ahead of time because you don't want to get to the event and have them start giving out obscure quotes and ask you what it means to them like what uh, <laughs> you know the, the, uh, not easy so go with something easy and <laughs> make sure that everybody knows what's going to be happening and so that you can step in so that the guests don't feel like they're they're being hung out to dry. Uh, okay, so if there is time in your meeting and you and you want to have somebody speak about pathways, keep it short, keep it interesting. You want them to discuss the benefits and the kinds of things that, that you'll learn when you use it and how it's going to help them in their career and in their personal life. Okay. Michelle? Yes. What do you suggest? Uh, we've already got three speakers for our open house. Wow. Like, the, would you say we're better off to kind of, or one would be better? One would be better and give them 15 minutes. Oh. It's a keynote, it's not a regular speech. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to feel bad going to them now and say, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you just go back to them and you say, okay, so we're having three open houses. Who wants to go first? Oh. So you've got your three chosen for the year, but, you know. Yeah, you should only have one because it's not a meeting. It's not a demonstration meeting. It's not a kickoff meeting. It's an open house. Okay. Okay. Now, promoting your event. So you need to start promoting your event a minimum, minimum of two weeks ahead of time. And I would encourage you to start at least a month ahead of time in order to get as much exposure as possible. I have sent you, or Anita will be forwarding on, a list of um, places where you can, where you can do your, your uh, promoting social media links. I've given you a, a schedule, a six week schedule of, of when you should start planning certain things and when you need to start posting things. Uh, I've, I think I've provided an order in which you should be doing your promotions and where you should be promoting. Um, but we did talk earlier about, about connecting your Eventbrite and your Zoom and and all those things and integrating them. That's not part of this workshop, but as I said, if you want to do that, I can run that one as well for you, Anita. Just let me know. Uh, let's see, promoting your event. Posters, flyers, websites, everything that you see up there on the screen. Unlike marketing, PR is free. You should not be spending a penny for any of this stuff. That's one of the nice things about social media. All platforms, free. Well, most platforms. Meetup is, if you have a Meetup account, then it's, you just roll it into that. If you don't have a Meetup account, I have three extra accounts on my account. If you need a Meetup account for your club, let me know. I'm more than willing to share. I like to share. Uh, Toastmasters has, an, has a great library of free resources such as flyers and promotional materials that you can use and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. They have everything there for you. Big thing, make sure your website is up to date and make sure it's attractive. Make sure you have pictures because people are going to go to your website and check it out. And if they don't like what they see, they're not going to come to your open house. How many people have a club Facebook page? Oh, why isn't everybody's hand up? Free advertising, folks. Come on, get a page. If, you're, if your club's not on Facebook, why not? Make sh set one up. Make sure your members like the page or the group. Make sure the division and district pages are liked by every member in your in your club. Check out LinkedIn. Do you have a LinkedIn club page? Why not? It's free. Come on. 
set up a, a, a group, LinkedIn group for your club. You can get lots of advertising that way. Um, what about Twitter? Okay, how about Pinterest? Oh, way to go, Elton. I hate Pinterest. <laughs> how about Instagram? Only Elton. How about Meetup? Okay, a few more. There are a lot of options out there. And then there's what, WhatsApp and WhatsApp or whatever that thing's called. And there's, there's other stuff. And I'm just not up on all of them because, you know, I, I like Facebook. <laughs> I'm old. I know. It's easy. I can do it. <laughs> But, but if you've got younger people in the group or you have people who really love their social media, get them involved. Put them to work. Work out what you want to have posted, when you want to have it posted. Let them be creative. If you have creative people in the club who don't like social media, they can still design and, and create some, some ads or, and, and just get them posted everywhere. Have you thought about a press release? For your open house. Okay, one. Okay, press release is free. Now, if you approach Snapped, it's a it's a great resource, but they come and take the picture and, and write up a little thing about the event while the event's going on. So people will hear about it after the fact. But by doing press releases, you can get interest before the event starts. Um, you can put, you can send a press release out to every place. I've included a press release sample in the, in the package that Anita will be sharing with you so that you can use that to, to write up a good release and send it out to your local media. You can do TV, you can do radio, and you can do print. It costs you nothing to send it out. And if it's a slow news day or they just need, you know, a little column to, to fill up, or they just need a good news piece, they'll grab it and run with it. Okay, and you never know what kind of exposure you'll get. Uh, email your former members and guests and invite them back to the, to the special event. Does everybody keep track of all of that? Good, okay. Is everybody on free toast toast? No, okay. Well, I, are you on Easy Speak? Okay, I don't know about Easy Speak, but free Toast Toast, if, if you have, you've got your member list and then if they decide not to renew, you can move them to the former members list, but you can email them and say, hey, you know, we're having this special event, come on back and, and join us for the day, you know, meet some new people, blah, blah, blah. All right, what other sites or places can you advertise? Now you see a bunch up there on the on the screen for promoting your event, but where else could you advertise, Karen? Yeah, I contacted all our community groups that send out newsletters, uh, who even have podcasts, and I set myself up for not only recurring events but also special events on their community websites. Nice. Okay. What kind of clubs can can advertise on their intranet? Yeah. Uh, level four in Pathways has creating a blog and creating a podcast. So if you've got your blog going or you have a podcast going, then, you know, promote the event and see who else you can get coming in. Use every means possible to get the word out because it's free. And, and why not? Um... When you are getting everything set up, the first thing you want to do is set up your Eventbrite link. Now you don't have to post it. You don't even have to have the, the posting um, complete. Just put in a bunch of, of uh, placeholders, save it and get the link because you're gonna need that link for everything, all of your advertising because that's where you want people to register. And then when you, when you set up your Zoom or your, your uh, Teams or, or your webinar or what was it, Google, Google Meetup or Google Meet, 
when you're when you're setting that up and you get that link, then you can add it to the Eventbrite page. But you need the link from Eventbrite before you do anything else. All right. Uh, and make sure that the Eventbrite link is on absolutely everything that you use to promote. Because you don't want people registering at multiple places, you want them registering at one so that you can track everything. Uh, Anita, how am I doing for time? Okay, you have another 25 minutes. Perfect, okay. Let's talk about our resource library through Toastmasters. Did you know that public relations is the only role that has a dedicated page to public relations? You don't have to create anything. It has all been done for you. All the, prof all the pictures are of professional models, so the attractive factor is high. Now, having said that, I don't like using them because nobody in my club looks that good. <laughs> You know, and if people see all these really gorgeous models and everything, they're going to expect, you know, a bunch of really good looking people and we're not that good looking. So they might be a little disappointed. So you might want to do a mix of the professional stuff and then real people. You know what I'm saying? Um, the open house flyer is fillable. Make sure you, you highlight all the pertinent information, including a way to contact you. I've also included a, a copy of that in, in the email. Now, there is not a whole heck of a lot of room for the Eventbrite registration on the, on the uh, open house flyer. So I suggest that in order to shorten it, you use Google, G-O-O dot G-L. It's a, it's a shortener or use tiny U, URL to shorten the link. Okay, so if in the in the address bar, you would just do goo.gl and then you'd put in the Eventbrite link and then it'll shorten it to about this long. And if you want to use tiny URL instead, just do that in the search box and then you put in the, the Eventbrite link. You're going to be receiving a list of, of possible sites where you can promote the event along with a checklist and a timeline to follow. Stick with that as much as you can. It'll make your lives so much easier. All right. Can you believe it? The pre-planning is done. Now we're going to take a look. Oh, yeah. So here's the, here's the site for, for uh, TI. This is the resource library. So you would just go to resources. I did share the link in the chat. Um, did you? So, yeah, I did. Awesome. Okay. So it's all there for you. Select marketing as the category and it'll pull up all the templates that you can use. All right, showtime. Everything is planned and you're good to go, right? Yeah, everybody nod. Yes, good, okay. Have everybody who is, who is going to actually be taking part log on at least 30 minutes ahead of time to ensure that there are no technical difficulties. Make sure you have your one or two people online who are your greeters to say hello to the guests and the members. Make sure they're friendly and they're welcoming. Just because you're, you're all online doesn't mean you can ignore everybody. Engage with them as you would at an in-person meeting. Collect all the email addresses from the attendees and from the registration site because you're going to have people who are going to jump on in who and the link had been shared with them, but they didn't necessarily register. So you want to make sure you capture everybody so that you can send them information. And you're going to send them a copy of your, your uh, electronic guest package. Does everybody have one? And um, Michelle, if I may add to this, we do have a virtual guest packet that TI has just designed. Oh, okay. Uh, several weeks ago, what I'm going to do, I will share the link in the chat again. You can use this. And oh. there was one that I did design. I will be sharing both of them, so feel free to use. Okay. And I've also sent, yeah. uh, mine will also be going mm -hmm. along with the email. So you'll have a variety of things to take a look at. If you don't have one already, put one together or steal one of ours and use that because you don't want to leave your guests walking away empty-handed. 
Um, so you're going to send them a copy of the guest package, yeah. the membership form, and an e-copy of the Toastmasters magazine, which you can pull off from the Toastmasters International site. Nita, do you want to share, share a link to the magazine? Yes, I will do that. Yeah. And make sure you let them know that you're going to be doing this so they don't think that you're spamming them with all kinds of crap. Can I say crap? Well, I didn't. <laughs> anyway, okay. And have fun. If there are technical difficulties, roll with it. Okay? Don't stress. And if you need to reschedule because, you know, internet goes down or there's power failure, then you just reschedule. You reach out to everybody, say, hey, sorry about that, beyond our control. We're gonna hold it again on this date. We'd love for you to come back. Okay, and then just re revamp the, the Eventbrite. You can still use the same Zoom link. Um, I don't know about the others though, but just revamp it, resend it, and just go from there. All right. Uh, yeah, okay, that's all covered. Now the post open house review. This is gonna be critical. And I know once the event's done, everybody's just gonna to wanna to say, whew, that's over, thank goodness, yay. But it's not over. <laughs> all that work has, heart, has paid off. You've had a gajillion guests and a ton of membership forms, right? Yeah, no, not usually. <laughs> no matter how many people show up, you have a responsibility to follow up and thank each and every guest individually for coming. So I've created a guest follow-up email um, that you can send out, use it, change it, do whatever you want, use it as a guideline. Uh, that'll come in the email from Anita as well. Mm -hmm. Book a short meeting with, with the club for a debrief. Figure out what went well, what could be changed, what should be stopped, and what you should have more of. If a member is doing this for their HPL or their level five project, you'll need to do a 360 evaluation for them. So be prepared for that. Um, be sure to let your guests know where you normally meet in person. Because if they think that you're meeting online all the time, they may, it may come as quite a shock when all of a sudden we're back in person and they're three cities away. <coughs> So, so make sure you, you let them know where you actually meet when you're live and in person. Uh, and that, include that information in the, in the um, follow-up email if it's not already in your guest package, just so that they're not, you're, they're not surprised. Uh, you might want to create a short uh, feedback survey that you can send to your guests along with that thank you email. And you can use SurveyMonkey, which will give you up to 10, get, 10 questions for free, or Google Forms, which is unlimited. Decide on what questions you want to ask them, and, and then don't make it long, because people don't really want to answer surveys. So keep it short and sweet to the point. Don't ask for, for huge essay answers, you know, multiple choice or, or short, really short answers. Um, and if you, if you send it with that thank you email, then you're not going to inundate them with a whole lot of, a whole lot of emails because you don't want to do that because there's that whole spam issue. So what kinds of questions could you ask for this questionnaire for the feedback? What would you want to know? What we did well. What you what did, did well. They like the most probably. What they like the most? Okay. What else? Yeah. What's your first impression of the meeting? First impression of the meeting? Okay, it's not a meeting though, it's an open house. Yeah. Okay. Are they coming back to visit us for our next meeting? Good. Would you consider a membership? Are you going to jump in with that already? Probably not. <laughs> you could. Would you be interested in knowing more about membership? Leaving it more open-ended, but certainly approaching the, the topic of membership. 
Absolutely. How about, did the open house answer your question about Toastmasters? Do you have any other questions about Toastmasters? Are you glad you attended the open house? What would you have liked, what would you have liked to have seen or experienced that we did not give you? Uh, would you like to attend a regular meeting? Would you like us to follow up with you? Now, most of those are yes, no answers. So it won't take a whole lot of time for them, but it's a way to, to keep talking. All right. Now, I know that this has been an awful lot to throw at you tonight, and you've been very, very patient, and I appreciate all the time that you have taken listening to me. I've put a package together of just about everything that you need to run an open house, and <clears throat> Nita's going to send that out. So if you have any questions or you want to discuss anything, uh, we're going to have a short question and answer time now. You can always email me if other questions come up, or if you want to have somebody facilitated um, organizing the open house for you, just making sure that you have everything all done and talk to your club. We can do that as well. It's all up to you. And I thank you very much. And you've got my email address there. If you need it. And we'll stick it in the, in the chat as well. And I will turn off that. And I open the floor while I have some water. <laughs> Well, Michelle, I thought we had our open house all planned <laughs> orders, and now you threw a monkey wrench into our plan. So I'm sorry. <laughs> like we, we were planning it like like a regular meeting and showcasing what a good organized meeting runs like, but now it should you're telling me it shouldn't be that way, right? That's a demonstration meeting. Yeah. And that's not gonna draw people in. So your open house is meant to draw them in. What is, what's the big draw that you're going to have? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, Anna in this meeting is going to be the contest I mean, the open house chair. Awesome. Sam Samson's the VPPR. So, <laughs> so, okay, so you guys know what you're going to do. <laughs> he said we gotta do it if it is easy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. I mean, well, first of all, thank you, Michelle, for giving like a lot of insight on how to actually launch the meeting because uh me and Anna we are we're new to the club, uh new to the executive. So we don't know much about how the open house works. So like now since she shed light on basically the, how to how to run it. I feel like there is a large burden on me <laughs> right now. <laughs> and I feel like, oh, honestly, I feel like quite un, like uncover up what you say, but then the thing is, is it's very inspiring. And uh, yeah, hey Joe, we need, really need to host a meeting for that. Like, we need a, a meeting. Yeah, we need, yeah, we, yes. we need, we, we, yeah. And- um, What's your club members? You yeah. have to do this all on your own. Have a committee. So, so uh, on that part, that's what I, that's what actually what I want to ask as well. So, how, like, is there any ways that I can motivate members to join the committee, or because I, I don't know, like, if the members would like to be part of it? Have you asked them? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, but the thing is, at the end of the day, if like there's no one to join, then I would be everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that between the three of you, you can you can get your members. I'll, I'll be on vacation. But, <laughs> but, um, no. You know, but here's the thing. When it comes to marketing, it's the young people that know how to do this stuff because I, I, I'm, I'm lost in that stuff, okay? Like, seriously. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Come on, really? Young yeah, people. really. <laughs> Okay, so okay first, Anita, we're not all like you, okay? <laughs> okay, so first of all, Joe, this is online, so you can sign on from wherever you are, so being on vacation does not matter. Five hours okay. different. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that does not matter. You can do it from anywhere. Samson, make sure that all of your club members are, are on social media, 
Make sure that you have a club Facebook page. Make sure that all your members like the page. Make sure that you post something to Facebook and then have them all share it, okay? Even if that's the extent of what your members do, ask them to share things, whether it's, whether it's retweet or, or share something on Instagram or Facebook. Get them to do that, okay? Email something out to their friends, whatever. Get them promoting this as much as possible. If you want to have an incentive with your members and say, okay, so if you guys send out invitations and we get somebody um, coming as a guest as a result of your invitation, that's a point for you. And then the person who gets the most number of points gets a Timmy's card or something. You know, work out some kind of an incentive for your club members to, to start promoting. It doesn't have to be expensive. We we'll talk about uh, adding in the medical masks. Well, there you go. Doctors <laughs> have medical masks. Yeah. Just, uh, I, I found out yesterday that as a club, we're not allowed to buy anything outside of Toastmasters. Not even a gift card from Tim Hortons. Yeah, exactly. Really? Yeah, Good thing you mentioned now. that, Joe. Yeah. Huh. Well, somebody's going to have to donate it. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that's new to me because everyone's done it in the past and yeah. just found out yesterday, Joanne von Zubin. Okay, so then, so then Anita, how do we get around giving our, our keynote speaker a thank you gift? What I learned is, yeah, you're right, Joe, we, don't, we cannot give like a Tim Hortons card or a Starbucks. So what we can give is something around that revolves around education. Maybe a, a Kobo, a Kobo gift card. So, like a gift card to chapters instead. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. This is what I. This is what okay. I learned. But you, you can't. You, you, can. you can't spend uh, Toastmaster money outside of Toastmasters. You cannot. You do can that. give them a, a Toastmaster teddy bear or or a, 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 you know something towards the store, but you can't buy something outside of Toastmasters. Outside of Toastmasters, you cannot buy anything. No, no gifts. No. Really? No really? gifts at all. No, no gift cards at all. No. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's a new ruling, unfortunately. Huh. It's the South. Okay. So then we have to buy the gifts from the gift store from TI. Mm -hmm. It's so okay. Can I have eight unused <laughs> mugs, the glass mugs, in case there you go. Them? <laughs> or a book. You can get them a book, or you can get them something else, right? Yeah. What happens if you know somebody who can donate so, uh, something to, to yeah. you to give you that's okay? Yes. Yeah. You're just not allowed to spend uh, membership money on something outside of Toastmasters. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Thank you for bringing that up. I had no idea. Yeah. Oh, I found out you. myself yesterday. So. <laughs> Any other questions? Overwhelmed? Too much information? The brain is ticking now. I know. <laughs> I wish we had this meeting before we had our meeting yesterday. <laughs> Long timing. We have to be confined to the month of October. Can we extend it? <laughs> well, if you start your planning now, you can make it for the end of October. <laughs> Michelle, do you have a copy of an agenda we can use? Yeah, like I a template? Pre-filled agenda. I have one, but it's for, for an in-person. Um, I have an in-person open house agenda, but I don't want I don't have one for virtual. Um, I would have just used something like I, I did up here on, on PowerPoint. Or if you want to do one on paper and just email that to them or include it, include the agenda itself on, on the Eventbrite invitation. There's, there's any number of places you can do it. So do I have anything right now? No, sorry. Any other questions? Michelle, about the press release you said that it can be free 
yes. to contact them. Uh, but how can you contact them? I have no idea. I've never done it. Email can them. Can you give me more context on that? How um, yeah. So, so the the press like, release uh, is is um, already pretty much created. You just have to put in your information. Then you can just email it to the radio stations, email it to the news stations, um, email it to the papers. Just jump on their on their websites and, and go to the um, uh, the media link, and that's where where you can. Is that right, Anita? It's the media yeah. link where you can send your press releases. Mm -hmm. So it depends on where you want to send it. Okay. Cool. Do you have any draft that we can do? Yep. Yep. The request or no? the email that Anita is going to yeah, send. Yeah, I'm going to send that tonight. Anything else? Yes, who would you recommend for a keynote speaker besides Don Frail? Uh, well, like I said, I, uh, Karen Goodyear gives a really good speech. Um, J.D. Thomas, if you want to blend in Toastmasters and starting a career from what he's learned is also good. Um, uh, Sebastian, and, I would, and I would recommend Elton as well. Yes. Elton, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sebastian Cosgrove um, is, is phenomenal. He's a former Toastmaster. He, he's the manager of customer service at Air Canada. Yeah, customer service, customer relations at Air Canada. And so because of Toastmasters and developing his speaking skills, he has traveled the world giving speeches and, and presenting um, Air Canada and their customer service. So, you know, he's once again, being able to tie Toastmasters in with his real life. So he's, he's a good speaker as well. But think about- Where can we find their contact list? Uh, let's see, I have, I think I have all of them. If you pop me an email, ask me for their contacts, I'll, I'll, I'll send you their emails. But think about who else is in your community who, who can talk about issues that, that um, is happening or, or concerns or events that are, that are going on in your community. Um, we had um, Mary Fragedakis, who was, who was a city councillor come to our open house because she wanted to help support us. She now works for the BIA along the Danforth. And so she, if we asked her back, she would definitely come back and bring along some of the people from, from the businesses up and down the Danforth to join us you know, for the open house. So that's something that we can do. Um, just think about who you have, what contacts you have. Um, it could be, um, if you're, if you're, if you want to talk about ecology or nature preservation, conservation kind of thing, you could always have somebody like Charles Sorrell. There's one of the Toronto parks that's been named after him, you know, going down Don Mills. Oh, is he dead now? Never mind. Don't ask him. I've seen him speak, <laughs> but don't, don't, don't ask for him because he's dead. Um, but <laughs> But you might want, to, if you're in Scarborough, you could have somebody from the Scarborough Historic Society come and talk about, you know, some of, of what Scarborough was like or the East York Society. You know, something that's community oriented, something where people can learn about the community they live in or work in and see how things have changed over a gajillion years, you know. It, there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of a lot of venues you can use. So go for it. Be creative. Find something that not everybody is going to, to necessarily think about. But what you want to have is something having to do with leadership or communication. Because that's what Toastmasters is all about. Okay? So you don't necessarily want a, a rock star unless they are good speakers as well, or, or somebody, 
You know who's really interesting? Tangent, I'm sorry. Do I have time? I have four minutes. Okay, so John Bon Jovi. Okay, everybody's heard of him? You think, oh, he's just another rock star, right? He has, did you know that he practices his scales four hours a day, every single day, just so that he maintains the proficiency that he has? That's dedication. That in itself is leadership because other people look to him and say, if he has to practice his scales, even now when he's this good, I have to as well. So he is leading by example. So, you know, although you can't book John Bon Jovi, if you have somebody else who, who does that kind of thing, maybe just leading by example or, or, or being an outright recognized leader, use them. See what they have to say. See what lessons they can teach the rest of us. Who would you want to hear? You. Justin Trudeau. Really? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just count the ums and ums. <laughs> That's and always for this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay, we have three more minutes left. This is your chance, folks. Yep. If you want to ask Anita something or anybody else. Anyone? Let's. I, when, when you're talking about these speakers, I think, personally, I think it's more the topic that they're talking about. And if you advertise, like if it's something that, that would engage people, you know, you advertise that. Mm -hmm. Right? I think that would be okay. I don't know. But. Some people will be drawn in by the topic and some people will be drawn in by the person. Right. Uh, this is why I think it's important that you know your demographics. Yeah. Because if you know your demographics, then you should, you'll know what type, what the topic or the theme of the uh, presentation that the presenter should be should be given. So like you your target audience. That's right. So what like, is our target audience these days? I don't know. <laughs> we don't even have a venue anymore. So this this uh, pandemic happened in a time when we had no more place to meet at. <laughs> I hear ya. We I can't hear even you. look for a place right now. So. <laughs> nope. I I'm in the same position. Yeah. So but but it's a good opportunity to to start figuring out who you want to have what groups you want to have as, um, as members, and then see what venues, you know, they might be able to come up with. Hmm. Any other questions? 829. Okay. Well, once again, folks, thank you so much for coming. It's it's been a pleasure talking to all of you and, and getting to meet you. To you too. <laughs> Please feel free to email me if you have any questions. Sorry, Anna. No, just thank you. Thank oh, you. Great so well. presentation. Great information. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Michelle.